hey how's it going we are continuing a series where we're taking a look at finance if anything how you could uh today sunday right how you could uh it's something that i'm doing as well as uh, perhaps others might be considering doing different options perhaps if it's something that you're currently doing exchanging your time for money perhaps you should focus on improving your knowledge expertise within different areas and securing some of those financial opportunities available I have covered one already and I'm going to be taking a look at the next opportunity available for uh, different businesses who are looking to develop products or services, right? And you yourself, if it's something that you're looking for, perhaps finance, securing finance, uh, the, uh, and if anything, understand, you could understand the process uh, within itself a little bit better, right? In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at circular economy in Wales public sector. Uh, myself, I'm interested in this particular opportunity, so I'm going to be trying to keep it brief without going too much into detail. Uh, this opportunity has raised too many red uh, flags for myself already, but either way, so. I'm kind of biased since I have read it already, but either way, let's try to cover everything in more detail for uh, those of you who are interested, there's going to be a link in the description, right, if I will miss anything. Uh, scope uh, to lead the way of climate action in Wales. Welsh government set the ambition for the public sector in Wales to be net zero by 2030. So that's tight, right, so there's not enough time left, I guess. With uh, some of the actions they are taking, perhaps, perhaps. Hopefully, we can achieve that. Let's be forced to right have uh, glasses half full. Delivering service with, uh, <laughs> with touch upon so many areas of life. With public sector has an important role to play in achieving widespread decarbonization targets. However, this will not be possible without adoption of circular economy practices. Uh, most of the people know that what that means, right? So that would be uh, having a full chain. So if you were to deliver uh, just for put things into perspective, right? Or give an example, right? So if you were to have a product, physical product, you would need to make sure about perhaps packaging of that product. So you would need to make sure full cycle. And then perhaps you're looking to source materials for packaging. You can take a look at making sure that uh, not necessarily 50% but 100% of all packaging would be recycled, which currently perhaps would be more expensive alternative for whatever reason. <laughs> I have covered that in more detail, but either way, so uh, it would be more expensive just because of the, some of the machinery, some of the people, some of the practices currently, but something that we should aim or target or try to strive to achieve in Africa. Uh, having control of full cycle of the materials that would be used even manufacturing some of the products, physical products, and something that would uh, we should try to achieve, right, for whatever reason. <laughs> but I don't know how well we're actually doing that. It's critical that the public sector in Wales works with the supply chain to identify cost-effective innovative solutions to reduce emissions and enable long-term value creation. So we're looking to achieve that, and uh, if you yourself you have some uh, ideas, there might be financial opportunities available out there, right? Moving to circular economy. Myself, I think it's an ongoing thing, right? <laughs> why why, <laughs> why uh, that never been an issue before, right? I think it's an ongoing thing, right? Every 10 or 15 years or so. People constantly trying to take a look at those areas and looking at address those areas, and uh, most of the time nothing's been done with those areas or uh, been done very little. But either way, moving to circular economy is a key to the delivery of economical outcomes. Uh, crucially, it also has potential to improve economy and social outcomes of wealth and support value-based healthcare and social responsibility procurement. Uh, aligning with the Welsh government commitment to reduce the dependencies of single-use plastics, uh, also known as perhaps some of the virgin materials, so something that haven't uh, some of those plastics haven't been used before, right? As quickly as possible, or perhaps some of the other uh, government initiatives where they're looking to 
if they can uh, ask <laughs> a friend, right? They do have a friend, but a friend as business do not use certain types of single use uh, packaging, right? Uh, this challenge seeks to deliver sustainable innovations that will address the use of single-use uh, products in the public sector, support to increase resilience in the well supply chains, and encouraging uh, green growth and population well-being across wealth. South Africans and the public sector partners will expect uh, to deliver demonstration and or scale and spread innovative products with uh, evidence that potential benefit, uh, cost effectiveness, and sustainability of their solutions. So they have highlighted what they are looking to achieve, right? So they have highlighted about three or four different areas that they're looking to achieve. So your project, this is how you should base your project on what kind of fundamental thing you're writing down the project for this organization. Challenge theme typically as BRI challenges come uh, uh, commence with the phase one feasibility stage. However, for this challenge, we are looking to demonstrate the real-world trials and therefore we will uh, not be supporting a phase one. We are seeking to identify the, uh, and support the delivery of combination of both phase two and phase three. Again, uh, myself, I have my own systems and where I'm looking at technology readiness levels, right? And this uh, institution has phases. Who knows what it stands under the definition of phase one, phase two, phase three, right? Who knows? Oh, I, I have my own systems, right? When it comes to managing different projects, sourcing finance, and I myself am using technology resonance levels, right? Some organizations use phases <laughs> Just to make things more interesting, I guess. Uh, phase three, collaborative project. Uh, that can demonstrate the potential of scalability of emerging and near market solutions. So then we're talking about uh, technology readiness level. So it's about number four, number five. You're looking at the prototype that has been tested, and you're looking to release to the market. And then you have a loop where there's going to be some feedback coming in, and you can develop your products and services, right? So they have phases. <laughs> I would like to keep it brief, so I'll jump over some of the perhaps uh, important information. But either way, there's going to be a link in the description, right? Innovation solutions could demonstrate the availability, scalability, and affordability of a new products and services that can reduce the environmental impact on public sector and wealth. The center they're looking to achieve, as well as promote batch opportunities for recycled materials in both the creation and reduction of pollution of products supplied by public sector. So they're looking to achieve that. They increase recycling and the re uh, repurposing of public sector waste. Okay reduce uh, collected waste for of region treatment okay offer a capital reduction as a solution may have either a cost reducing either uh, effects or possible revenue generation capabilities and the last one establishing local manufacturing partnerships and feasibilities across into projects partner uh, partner organizations I think uh, that's the last one but I think uh, within the contract they would ask you to have a partner right with the public sector usually it's very hard to communicate with uh, all the administration staff up there and especially when securing partnerships right that's my personal experience but this is part of the requirements within the contract so <laughs> just worth taking a look at mentioning that uh, it's just a sitting down and having conference calls and everything can take weeks if not months so it's part of the requirement with but I mean I understand next time I'll write down two partners to make things easier <laughs> out of scope of uh, what not necessarily would succeed uh, uh, if you are seeking for funding for a project that you're looking to deliver the you, you, there's a uh, not things that uh, this organization is interested in funding, right? So it would be out of scope. In other words, we are not looking to fund projects that will do not have at uh, last one Welsh public sector collaborator. So this is something that you need to have before you can do anything, right? You need to find public sector collaborative, right? So uh, I have reached out to this organization, uh, asked for contact information, what kind of collaborators, where can I find them, right? <laughs> Where can I find those collaborators? If they are somewhere in the city, do I need to call someone, go, go and say hi? 
but this is how difficult it can be, right? Then it comes to doing business with any of those institutions, but uh, it's value for money, to say the least, right? Uh, purely focused on feasibility. We are seeking real-world practice demonstrations, not academic research uh, papers. So it not necessarily be based on paper, but the real-world examples, right? So something that they're looking to do. Uh, third one, cannot evidence and engagement with the potential future customers to understand needs so you need to cover this area as well as fail to address how many potential negative outcomes will how negative outcomes would be managed so it's something that needs to be a risk assessment assessment within the project where you would need to cover that as well how you're going to mitigate and manage all the risks right so it's something that's called a uh, contingency plan in place. <laughs> Either way, that's more. Cannot evidence how a proposal will generate positive outcome or social impact. So it needs to be a way how you're proposing to measure that, as well as uh, fail to consider affordability and practicality of widespread implementation. So you need to demonstrate that as well. So it, so far it's very easy. This is to say the least how you can structure your project right which can take i don't know like a, an hour two hours sometimes it can take eight hours to write down this kind of project right which is kind of great uh, usually when something that would take eight hours of my time can cost a lot of money right just to present this project and sometimes the people who would read that project i hope to say the least that people would be qualified people to read that so if i'm we are talking about uh, some of those areas right so <laughs> I would present this project and people not necessarily have a background in, in order to understand why I'm actually talking with, about this project within the project brief. <laughs> okay, let's uh, finalize and jump on the money to see the least. Funding allocation and project details. This challenge is open to applicants who will deliver either a phase two or phase three project. Current funding of one million pounds is available for for portfolio of projects, uh, so there's going to be entire budget, right? Which may be subject subject to change depending upon the number of quality or, or submissions received. We are seeking to a broad range of projects from fifty thousand pounds for rapid, potentially low cost demonstrations for up to four hundred pounds to large scale demonstrations. So it's, they're looking to address this problem, right? So it could be anywhere from within the range of 50,000 up to the depending of how well you can demonstrate as well as how well this project that you're looking to demonstrate and to do would fit between the guidelines of what this organization is looking to accomplish and achieve uh, based within given <laughs> framework right yourself if you're looking to develop your skills expertise knowledge uh, habits I would highly recommend he purchase this journal or which would focus on uh, process within itself how to develop good habits if you were to pick up this journal I would highly recommend to work from cover to cover that would be, uh, be enough for you to develop your skills uh, small routines that will benefit you and particularly focusing on 24 hours window every single day right everyone has those 24 hours the important question to ask what you're doing within those 24 hours i have identified different areas which i personally believe are very important for everyone with, within this journal uh how you should approach your day what areas you should focus on uh you can find uh, this journal qr code in the corner or uh website below Uh, myself, I have uh, I, what I think is a great idea and it's something that I myself I'm looking to you potentially uh, to you within this project But before I can do any of that I need to reach out to the team so they Can direct me to you what? Uh, public body or business that would actually take my idea and use it within uh, Wales, right? <laughs> so it would be they would support that idea so it could be used and potentially would be used to benefit large groups of people within not necessarily limited to wells but if anything it could start there and it can benefit uh, people within that area i'm not entirely sure all the legal requirements and everything what you yourself if it's something that you are interested in 
uh, do, if anything, do your own research and try to understand within the contract some of the terms, small shift, whatever they might be written within there, when in particular when it comes to intellectual property, they might want to purchase that or, <laughs> or take a hold or take over all of the intellectual property, a lot of things, right, to, to <laughs> take care of when it comes to reading the contract, understanding the contract, and in particular signing any contracts that you might find yourself in, right? Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.